Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very complex equation, an exponential equation with complex numbers. We have z to the power negative z equals e to the power pi over 2. I apologize if I did this problem before because that kind of looks familiar, I just noticed. Anyways, I hope I didn't. So let's go ahead and find some solutions and then we're going to check on something. Okay, so these equations are not very easy to solve because the base and the exponent are both variables and they are somewhat different. They're opposites, right? If you had z to the z, would it be easier? Uh, maybe a little bit. It basically comes out to be the same thing. So let's go ahead and do this. I wanna go ahead and use natural log on both sides because if I do that, then I can basically, uh, you know, get rid of the z as the base. Of course, you can also use the ex uh, complex exponentiation and write this as e to the power of negative z ln z, which is also going to be helpful. It's pretty much equivalent to natural logging both sides. Let's, let's go ahead and use this instead. Now we have an equality. Therefore, we can basically write this as follows. Negative z ln z equals pi over 2. Awesome. Can you guess at this point what the solution is going to be like? If you did, do not make give it away. Let's just wait until everybody has an idea, okay? So here's what I'm going to do first. I don't like the negative sign there, and I can't really bring in an extra negative sign here, can I? I mean, I can bring in a power for the ln. Like, I can put this negative over here and make it z to the power negative 1, but then I would need a negative z to the power negative 1. I don't have z to the power negative 1. I just have the z. So let's do this instead. Get rid of the negative sign by multiplying both sides by negative 1. That gives us z, ln z equals negative pi over 2. Actually, having a negative pi over 2 is better than having pi over 2. You'll see in a little bit why. Okay? Now, we got the following equation, and here's my goal. I want to apply a very special function to both sides so I can turn this z, ln z into a single thing. And that can be achieved using a special function called w, and if you apply w to anything like t to the t, that gives you t, which is also called the product log, or that's how Wolfram Alpha interprets it, or you can call it Lambert's w function. Okay, uh, we can just call it w. Now, if you w both sides, you should get the answer, but we do need to get some work done first. And what is that work gonna look like? I'm gonna take the ln z first, and then I'm going to write the z in terms of ln z. And as you should know, ln z and e to the z are inverse functions. So e to the power ln z is just z. So I can now replace z with e to the power ln z. And notice that I switched places. Because I want my t to be first, like this. That's my t. That's my t. You get the idea? And on the right-hand side, what, what can I do? Negative pi over 2. Uh-oh. That doesn't look like t to the t, but we can actually make it. How do you make it? By considering the fact that we're dealing with complex numbers. So what can I replace negative 1 or negative pi with? Hmm. Negative 1 can probably be replaced with, let me think, i squared. Yes. Isn't that one of the things that you first learn? Like if you're going to learn about complex numbers or complex analysis, they keep telling you, right? Don't forget, i squared equals negative 1. Negative 1 equals i squared. You probably haven't thought about it that way, but sometimes in math we need to reverse things, kind of reverse engineering. So I'm going to go ahead and write this negative 1 as i squared, and then when you multiply it by pi over 2, it's equivalent to negative pi over 2. Just an interesting way of writing negative 1, right? Cool. Now, such a complex method. Now, we do have... Do we have t to the t or c to the c on the right-hand side? No, but if we split up one of the i's and write it like this, we're getting closer. We're still not there. What can I do next? Well, here's the thing. If you know the relationship between i pi over 2, or it, does that look familiar at all? It should be, because e to the power i pi over 2 is just i. So instead of replacing i pi over 2 by something, I could, but it's longer. Let's just replace i with e to the power i pi over 2. Wait a minute. That's not the only way to write i. You can also add multiples of 2 pi. Okay, we don't care. It doesn't matter. i can be written as anything we want. And I want it to look nice. Simple. 
So now we have the following ln z times e to the power ln z equals i pi over 2, I gotta be careful, times e to the power i pi over 2. At this point, you could probably do like a 1 to 1 correspondence. Hey, this is supposed to equal that, right? Well, let's just go ahead and do it the Lambert way, kind of like a fancier method. Put a w here and here and apply Lambert's w function on both of these products. When you apply it on ln z e to the ln z, remember if you apply to t to the t, you get t from there. So the left hand side is going to be ln z, which is the natural log of z. And the right hand side is supposed to be i pi over 2. Now what happens if you don't use the principal value, instead you use something else, then you're going to have to deal with more complications. But I'm going to show you towards the end uh, what the result from Wolfram Alpha is going to look like. I, I believe I included it. Hopefully I did not forget. Okay. Now, that's the answer. No. We have to solve for z. So let's go ahead and do e to the power of both sides. If I do e to the ln z, it's just going to be e to the i pi over 2. But didn't we just say that e to the i pi over 2 is just i because pi over 2 is basically the argument, right? Pi over 2 is the argument for this number, which is known as i. This is imaginary, this is real, and this is called the argon plane. Just a coordinate plane with a fancy name. Okay, so what, what does that mean? It just means that z equals i. But is that the only solution? That's a million dollar question, right? Well, here's the thing. Do you think if z is a solution, negative z would also be a solution? That's something that you should almost always check because of the maybe symmetry. Well, is this symmetrical? Probably not, but here's the thing. In other words, this is what I'm trying to say. Sorry if I was confusing. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to say that z to the power negative z, is that equal to, or is that the same thing as this one? Maybe in some cases. I think that would make a good equation too. Maybe we can do another uh, a video on this one later on, right? It looks like a good problem to me, and I don't think I've made it before. But anyways, let's go ahead and test something out. Instead of just dealing with too many theory or too much theory, let's go ahead and just plug it in. Do you think a negative i could be a solution? Let's go ahead and find out. The best way to find out is just plug it in. I have negative i to the power i. Cool. I'm expecting to get e to the power pi over 2 from here. What is negative i though? In the complex argon plane, negative i is going to appear here, right, in the negative imaginary. And its modulus is 1 still. The argument is not going to be pi over 2, though. It's going to be negative pi over 2. Cool, cool. Then we can do e to the power negative i times pi over 2. And we still have to raise it to the power i. That's going to make e to the power negative i squared times pi over 2. But i squared is negative 1, so negative i squared is positive 1. And this is equal to e to the power pi over 2. Yay, we got another solution, and that is z equals negative i. So we got two solutions at least, right? So it looks like it's a solution too. Let's go ahead and find out what Wolfram Alpha says, and ta-da. Wolfram Alpha says the following, and this should represent negative i. I don't know why it doesn't give us i. Maybe it does. I haven't seen it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.